hello everyone let's start with something else except literature as we know that language is as much important as literature is so we are going to start a chapter in english grammar mind it that is not grammar that is grammar and the name of the chapter is clause c l a u s e clause you may want to know why have i made this smiley on the first page see it's because i have a smile on my face right now because of two things one is the way i got order for making video on class and the second thing is that this is my first video on grammar and in the very first video i'm touching clause not some parts of speech we'll make other videos on other topics as well in coming days let's now focus on clause see when we talk of a, any particular thing when we get an exact definition of that particular thing that makes our concept very clear and you know that is how we can differentiate different sources that we study different topics of grammar are discussed in many books but there is a point which book should we follow which book should we prefer so i always think not to prefer a single book not to follow a single book one should observe different sources and different standard sources not any of the book that is available in market i genuinely follow this ren martin for english grammar and sometimes when i need to see some other things i consult merriam webster dictionary or cambridge or oxford dictionary sometimes i take help from internet as well okay so clause merriam webster dictionary tells that clause is a part of a sentence a part of a sentence that has its own subject and verb so within a sentence a part that we have which has a subject and verb of its own means that may not be a complete sentence that may be a part and even then it has its own subject and verb or more elaborately when you follow the full definition that is given in merriam webster it's given there a group of words containing a subject and predicate see now the technical terms are used as we know that uh, this subject and predicate are two main components of a sentence so a group of words containing a subject and predicate and functioning as a member of complex or compound sentence so see 
whenever we have to talk of clause we will have to talk of different types of sentences on the basis of structure see when we talk of the classification of sentence on the basis of structure we have its three types the first one is simple sentence which is made up of only one clause and then on the second place we have a compound sentence which is made up of two or more clauses where all the clauses are independent all the clauses are main clauses when we talk of complex sentence that is made up of two or more than two clauses where at least one clause is subordinate clause that is dependent clause so the question comes here what is the main clause and what is subordinate clause main clause is also known as independent clause subordinate clause is also known as in dependent clause sorry dependent clause so just focus on the definition once again clause is a group of words containing a subject and predicate see this is how this clause is different from phrase phrase is also a group of words but there we don't have uh, you know a particular subject and predicate but here we have a subject and predicate as well means some verb and verb forms to be followed verb forms and other things that we consider in predicate so a group of words containing a subject and a predicate and functioning as a member of a complex or compound sentence so basically we have here a group of words and in that group we have a subject and predicate and they are the part of a complex sentence or a compound sentence so clause is basically a part of a complex sentence or a compound sentence as it is told by merriam webster dictionary okay when we follow cambridge dictionary cambridge dictionary makes it more clear why there is one more word that i got a group of words consisting of a subject and a finite form of a verb see it also tells that it is the group of words which has a subject and verb but the verb has finite form so that finite form must be focused what is this finite form we'll talk about it and as i told you that there are two kinds of clauses one is main clause or independent clause the other one is subordinate or dependent clause and you know further when we divide this subordinate clause they are of three types subordinate clauses are further divided into three types the one is the first is noun clause the second is adjectival or adjective clause and the third one is adverbial or adverb clause so it means just follow this pattern there is the definition of clause a group of words having a subject and sentence subject and predicate of its own that is a part of sentence and further this this clause is of two types the first one is main clause the second one is subordinate clause and the subordinate clause clause further is divided into three types one is now first one is the noun clause second one is adjective clause third one is adverb clause 
clear okay now move to this finite form that we have to talk about that is there in cambridge dictionary what is this finite form of a verb how this finite is different from non finite <coughs> finite form of a verb this form of a verb gets changed according to the subject and tense see when we read tenses uh, nowadays we read tense and time so whenever we have to read present tense pre past tense or future time all the verb forms that we use there for showing tense they are finite verbs if we go further as we see v1 and v5 v5 means v1 plus s or es means singular form of verb v1 and v5 are used in present tenses v2 is used for past v3 is used in perfect tense sentences v4 is used with other helping verbs like is mr was were will be for showing continuity in continuous tenses so these forms thus used are considered to be finite form of verbs is it clear so finite form basically means the verbs those those are used in different tenses for showing those tenses and they they you know they are used differently in different tenses and according to their subject i mean uh, according to the number as well for example uh, if if we use in a simple present we use v1 with the, the subjects like uh, i you they but we use v5 with the third person singular number like he she it so they are finite form of verbs for making it more clear we can talk of non finite in a very brief note non finite they do not get changed with subject and tenses in fact they always remain same means they are not affected by tense or you know the subject number number of the subject whether it is singular or plural they are non finite are of three types infinitive that is actually 2 plus v1 and the second one is gerund that is a form of v4 actually that is not you know that is not used for continuity mind it gerund is different from that it is in the form of v1 plus ing of course v1 plus ing that is that we say v4 and then participle and further this participle is divided into three types present participle that is again a form of v4 i, I mean a form of v1 plus ing and past participle that is v3 actually that is used basically as adjective not as a verb and then perfect participle that is having plus v3 so these all gerund infinitive participle they are considered to be non finite they are not used as main verbs hmm? main verbs they always remain same with all tense and time or place i i mean with subjects okay so let's come again to clause as we talked this this is of two types one is main clause first one is main clause and the second one is subordinate clause so what is main clause a clause that can stand alone as a sentence means when we take it out from a sentence it can stand as a as an independent sentence can make sense by itself so for 
generating a meaning it does not need the help of other part and that is called main clause and uh, this is also known as a simple sentence yes for example there is a sentence i can't cook very well but i make a quite good pancakes here one part that we are having is i can't cook very well and the other part that we are having is i make quite good pancakes so if we see them differently they will seem as a different independent sentence here these both clauses are of equal importance and could exist as separate sentence and that is why these both are main clauses and since they don't depend on other they are called independent clause as well so main clause is known as independent clause when we talk of subordinate clause that is also known as dependent clause a clause that add the additional information to the main clause means it helps main clause it adds some some information to the main clause it it modifies the main clause but which cannot stand alone as a sentence subordinate clause does not stand alone as a sentence it cannot for example i'll get you some stamps if i go to town so the first part that is i'll get you some stamps that is the main clause because it does not need dependency it can stand alone but if i go to town when you use this if and that makes it dependent that is subordinate clause here subordinate clause is not as important as the main clause see if if we say if i go to town it means something is you know left something is left to be said but when you say i'll get you some stamps that makes that that seems a you know independent sentence an independent sentence see other example he believed that the earth was round so here he believed is a main clause that the earth was round is a subordinate clause and very interestingly that we don't find generally in grammar books uh, like this for comprehending main and subordinate clauses more clearly we can talk of two conjunctions mind it here we are discussing clause but for comprehending clauses more clearly we should talk of some conjunctions those are used in these clauses so the conjunctions that we have to talk of are coordinating and subordinating conjunctions you know conjunction is a part of parts of speech hmm and conjunction means in hindi when we say the word that is used for it is samuchchay bodhak or sanyojak so it 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 is it is used for connecting to different parts so here we are having coordinating and subordinating conjunctions it's it's very easy to understand if we understand these conjunctions and if we know all the examples concerned with them we can easily classify main clauses and subordinate clauses we can easily classify this co compound sentence and complex sentences no kind of confusion will prevail after that okay coordinating class simply coordinating classes are used for main clauses subordinating clauses as their names is is are used for subordinating clauses 
and when we talk of main clauses when two main clauses come together they make a compound sentence when we talk of one main other subordinate clause coming together they make complex sentence so it's very easy to understand just by identifying the conjunctions there in the sentence if the conjunction is coordinating then the sentence is compound if the conjunction is subordinating then the sentence is complex and as we know when the sentence is compound there are two main clauses and when the sentence is complex there are one main and other subordinate clause clear let's see we can find it very easily uh see as it is given in ren martin that book of grammar ren martin says about coordinating conjunction a coordinating conjunction joins together clauses of equal rank equal rank means two main clauses okay and chief examples of this coordinating conjunctions are and but for or nor also either or neither nor they are also known as either or or neither neither nor so we have to remember these conjunctions only and but for or nor also either or neither nor they all are chief examples of coordinating conjunctions see some of the sentences by seeing the sentences it will be more clear he is slow but he is sure hmm? so but used here is coordinating conjunction and when we remove this but we'll have two different parts one is he is slow the other is he is sure both are independent clauses both are main clauses the similar manner we have he was all right only he was fatigued he was all right he was fatigued two main clauses only is coordinating conjunction she must weep or she will die she must weep she will die two main clauses either he is mad or she will die he is mad she will die these all are examples of two main clauses standing together and hence forming compound sentences as i was telling you since two main clauses are there two main clauses clauses are you know combined so they make compound sentence and these compound sentences are made by the help of coordinating conjunctions like and but for or nor also either or neither or clear when we move to other conjunction that is subordinating conjunction again ren martin says a subordinating conjunction joins a clause to another on which it depends for its full meaning it means subordinating conjunction joins a subordinate clause to the main clause and remember the examples the chief examples of subordinating conjunctions after because because if that though although till before unless as when where while see the examples after the shower was after the shower was over the sun shone out again so after the shower was over when we say this sentence it needs something more to be said the sun shone out again that is main clause that is independent one but this after the shower was over is dependent one that is subordinate clause he ran away because he was afraid 
because he was afraid that is subordinate clause he ran away that is main clause you will pass if you work hard if you work hard, work hard that is subordinate clause you will pass that is main clause these all are examples of joining subordinate clauses to their main clauses and hence forming complex sentences with the help of subordinating conjunctions in our next video we'll talk of the types of subordinate clause as i told you there are of three types noun clause adjective clause and adverb clause okay thank you